Exactly two days after Rishi Sunak became the Prime Minister of the UK, he announced some of his plans to do with education. One of his main goals was to make both math and English compulsory until the age of 18, A-levels, instead of giving students the choice to drop them after the age of 16, after GCSEs. Just for some background information, the UK's education system is one of the only Western education systems that gives students the choice to not study math and English past the age of 16. That is one of the main arguments in favour of introducing this law. It's quite obvious that both math and English are core subjects that will benefit people for the rest of their lives. And that is one of the arguments made by Rishi Sunak's party. And it's a fair point, but that's why students have to study math and English until the age of 16. I personally live in Dubai and I go to a British school that does British national exams. I don't do international A-levels, I do the national ones. For the most part, at least. When my parents were deciding which school they want to send me to, they had to consider which curriculum they wanted me to do. There was really only three options, either British, American, or IB. The main reason why I chose to stay in a British school after GCSEs was because I didn't want to do English further on. If you've watched a couple of my videos, then you'd know that I hated English GCSE. It was the only subject that I didn't get a 9 in, even though it was probably the subject I put the most effort in. I literally could not bear the idea of studying English for a further two years. I'd be in school after a good day with my friends and I'd look at my timetable, and when I saw that I had English next, my mood would just drop. I would literally get pissed when I saw it. So after my GCSEs, I chose to do A-levels because I could finally avoid English for once and for all. And that's the beauty of the British system. It's dynamic. It gives students the freedom and responsibility of deciding what they want to study. I was proper happy in the first couple of weeks of year 12 because even though I was doing hard subjects like math and further math and physics, I enjoyed them. I, I didn't dread them like I dreaded English. Now imagine forcing everyone in the UK and also people internationally doing the British system to be restricted in their choices. Imagine forcing them to do both math and English at A level. It could genuinely ruin the sixth form experience for a lot of people. That being said, we do need to be fair. Rishi Sunak did say that if they did implement this, it would come with fewer exams at GCSE, so it would balance stuff out a little bit. This could also be a win for students that would usually take math or English. Right now, in most schools, people only take math or English if they really want to or need to, like if they're interested in it or if they want to pursue it at a degree level. If you want to become an engineer or an economist or anything in STEM really, you have to take math. And if you want to become a journalist or, I don't know, whatever English people do, <laughs> then you have to take English as well. That means that most of the people that take English, most of the people that take math, are people that want to, the people that would usually be quite good at it. So the competition would be quite high, the grade boundaries would be high. In my school, for example, if we wanted to take math A-level, we had to get an 8 or a 9 at math GCSE. They had to set a boundary on who could come in and take the A-level because they knew that it was much harder than the GCSE. I want you to imagine that suddenly everyone is forced to take English and math. People that don't really want to take the subject or might not be good at it would now be forced to take it. The average competition for English and for math would be lower because now everyone's taking it. And so it would be easier to get a higher grade because the grade boundaries would be brought down a little bit. That's the reason why it's easier to get an 8 or a 9, an A star at GCSE, than it is to get an A star at A level. Especially in subjects like math, science and English, the core subjects. It's because grade boundaries at GCSE are always weighed down by people that are forced to take those subjects. I think the people that will get harmed the most out of this situation, and now this is only my theory, so don't take it as a fact, would be the more artistic people. I think usually they're not as technical as people that would take math or, or science, and they're not also as academic as people that would take English, for example, and so they'd fall somewhere in between. They wouldn't really benefit from the grade boundaries becoming lower because they wouldn't even take those subjects in the first place. I'm talking about the people that would take subjects like drama, music, art, photography, those type of subjects. I'm not slating on them, I'm just saying they could be harmed the most, but that's just a theory. And that being said, don't worry too much about it. This video is being filmed on the 15th of December, 2022. And as of today, no legislation has passed that actually forces people to take math and English A-level. So till then, the British curriculum, the British school system, will stay the same. And even if they do pass legislation, it's a big change. It would take years for it to be fully implemented because exam boards and schools still have to adapt. If you're watching this video, I'm assuming you're at least in year 9 or year 10. But I don't want you to worry because they won't really have enough time to implement this legislation from the time that you're watching this video until the time you start your A-levels. And who knows, maybe if Rishi Sunak follows the footsteps of the previous two prime ministers, maybe he'll step down before the May exams even come and people will just forget this idea.